Alright then my friends, so the time has come now whereby we want to start showing data in the app and by data I mean the user's preferences, so how strong do they like the coffee, how many sugars, their name, etc. Now to do that we're going to use a database provided by Firebase. So go to your console first of all, console.firebase.google.com and choose your project, in my case it's Ninja Brew Crew, and then click on database on the left. Now Firebase gives us two options here, they have an older database called a real-time database or the newer one called a cloud firestore and this is the one we're going to use. So click on create database and make sure you start in test mode and this alters the rules of your firestore so that anyone can read and write to the database. If you started in locked mode then it means that we'd have to start playing around with the rules a little bit to start storing data and I don't want to do that just yet. We might have a look at this later on. So for now let's start in test mode and click on next. So let's choose the location, it doesn't really matter, I'm going to choose Europe West and go to done and this is going to create your Firestore database for you. Okay so once that's done you're going to see this page and right here we have an empty Firestore database. Now I'm not going to go into too much depth about what a Firestore database is. If you want to learn more from the ground up about Firestore I have a complete series on this channel about Firestore databases and I'll leave that link down below. But basically what it does is allow us to store data and collections. So we'd have collections for different things in our app. So for example we could have collection for, I don't know, uh, user data. We could have a collection for books on a book website or movies on a movie website, okay? So it's particular types of data and we can create a new collection by clicking this button right here. Now in each collection we'd have a series of documents or records and each document would represent one record in that collection. So say we had a collection of I don't know, user data and each record, each document would represent the data of one particular user, right? So each record or each document would look a bit like an object in programming and it would have key value pairs. So for example, if we had a user data collection, each document would want to have several different key value pairs. For example, the strength of their coffee, that would be a key value pair. The strength would be the key and the value could be some kind of number. We'd also have a name key and maybe a string as a value. We'd also have a sugars key and a number as a value to say how many sugars that user has in their brew, okay? So that's the Firestore database set up now. We don't need to create a collection right here. It's gonna do that programmatically for us when we start to work with Firestore in our code. Okay then, so now we've set up the Firestore database in the Firebase console, now we can start to use the Firestore package inside our app to communicate with that database. Now remember, we already installed that package. If I go down to pubspec.yaml, we can see right here we have the cloud Firestore package. So we don't need to install anything else, we can just start to use it and interact with our Firestore database. Now to do that, what I'm going to do is create a new file inside the services folder. So like we had a service class for authentication, we're also going to have a service class for the database. So let me right click this and go to new file and I'm just going to call this database dot dart. Now inside here, the first thing we need to do is import that cloud Firestore package. So I'm going to say import and then it's going to be Firestore, this one right here. Okay, so now let's create a class called database service, like so. And inside here, this is where we're going to have all the different methods or properties that are going to be used to interact with the Firestore database. Now the first thing we need is something called a collection reference and it's essentially just that, a reference to a particular collection in our Firestore database so that if we want to then do something with that collection, either read from it or add to it, then we can use this collection reference. So the way we do that is by first of all declaring a final property because this is not going to change, it's of type collection reference like so and we'll give this a name, I'm going to call it the brew collection because we're going to store brews inside this collection and then it's going to be equal to something. So the thing it's going to be equal to is a Firestore instance first of all, so Firestore.instance and we have access to this thing because we imported this package and then 
we can reference a specific collection inside our Firestore database, and that collection will be called brews. I've made this collection name up. You can call it what you want, but we're going to be storing brew data in there or user data in there for each brew. So I've called it brews, okay? Now, I know when we went to enable a Firestore database a minute ago, we didn't create a collection, but that doesn't matter. If, when the time this code runs, that collection doesn't exist, Firestore will go ahead and create it anyway. It's going to look at this and say, okay, it doesn't exist yet, but I'll create it for you. And then once it does create it, thereafter, it just gets a reference to that particular collection. So it doesn't matter that we've not created one already. It will be created behind the scenes for us, and you'll see that later on. So then, now we have a reference to this collection, and we can go ahead and do things now, like add new documents to the collection. We can read documents from the collection, or update documents in the collection, and even remove documents from the collection. And we do that by using this variable now, right here. And we're going to start that process in the next lesson by adding a Firestore record for every new user when they register.